All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. Most high Christ blessed. Most high Christ blessed. Welcome back. All right. I'm Brother Eli, and to my left. I'm Brother Andrew. All right. In today's lesson, we want to cover and deal with is understanding judging and judgment. All right. Understanding judgment, understanding judging, excuse me, and judgment. All right. Now, what is the reason for this class? It's because when we go out and teach or when we deal with our families, our loved ones, this is the reason why the class was inspired because our people tend to like to throw in your face about, you can't judge me. You know what I'm They think about Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Only God can judge me. That's not what Matthew 7 and 1 is talking about. Judge not unless you be judged. All right? So that's the topic matter that we want to discuss today and try to give some understanding and shine light on so that we can get the full understanding on what Matthew 7 and 1 is making reference to. All right? So now, again, today's title is called Understanding Judging and Judgment. So we're going to go is over a few key little things to try to give you clarity on how to understand the difference between the two. It's very simple. It's nothing rocket science about it at all. All right? So without further ado, let's open up with the book of Micah, chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of Micah, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. And I said, here, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, uh -huh. and ye princes of the house of Israel. All right. It is not for you to know judgment. He said, is it not for you to know judgment? Is it not for us to understand judgment? That's the question. So how do we get to understand it on judgment? Okay. So now let's dig into it. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1. The book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Uh -huh. Judge not that ye be not judged. So this is the question that we get all the time. Who gave you the authority to judge us when the Bible says you're not supposed to be judging nobody? That's the wrong understanding of that scripture. All right? So we're going to try to shine light on that and give you the, uh, the proper understanding on judge not unless you be judged. All right? So again, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 2. All right? And let's get the understanding on what Christ was saying, judge not unless you be judged. All right? Again, the Bible gives us clear-cut instructions on how to read it. To get the proper understanding. All right. In the book of Isaiah, it tells you that you got to read it how. Precept, precept must be upon precept. precept. Hear a little and there a little. Okay. So we got to go in a little bit of the New Testament and a little bit of the Old Testament to get the understanding on what the Bible is really making reference to. All right. So we're going to do that right now. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh huh. Therefore, thy art inexcusable, old man. Whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thy judges another, thy condemnest thyself. So now he said, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever that judges, all right? For wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest himself. So right off the back is telling you, listen, none of us is exempt or excused from the judgment of God. Of God, all right, or the laws of God. We all have to go through the same exact thing. When you break the commandments of God, you will be judged by the commandments of God. That's what he's saying. None of us is above the law, is what he's saying. None of us is above the law. Read. For though that judges does the same thing, all right, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. So now it says, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. So now, again, we're going to go and find out what truth is. Let's deal with that first. Let's get to understand it on truth. What is truth according to the Bible? The book of Psalms 119 and 151. The book of Psalms 119 and 151. Again, the Bible explains itself. All right? If you study and meditate, you'll get the clear and proper understanding on these scriptures. Psalms 119 and 151. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 151. Uh-huh. Thy art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. And all thy what? And all thy commandments are true. One more time. And all thy commandments are true. So all the commandments of God is the truth. All right? So now let's go back to Romans 2 
and read verse 2 again. All right? So now we know exactly what is truth according to the Bible. Truth according to the Bible is the commandments of God. All right? Keeping of the commandments of God. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 2 and verse 2. Read. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. So the judgment of God is according to his commandments. Read. Against them which commit such things. For those of us that break his commandments. Read. And thinkest though this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doeth the sin, that thy shall escape the judgment of God. So he said, listen. For those of you that think that because you understand the commandments or the judgment of God, that just because you're teaching it, that you're going to escape the judgment of God and you're doing the same exact thing? No, you're not going to escape it just because you are in that role of leadership. No, you're not exempt from the rules. Read. Verse 3. But the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. And thinkest thy this, O man, that judges them which do such things, mm -hmm. and do the same. And you do the same. So you judge those that do such things as breaking the commandments of God. But yet yourself, you're doing the same exact thing. And you think what? Read. That thy shall escape the judgment of God. And you think you're going to escape the judgment of God? No, that's not going to happen. All right? Read. Or despises thy the riches of his goodness, and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance. So now let's go back. I didn't want that. I'm sorry. Okay, but let's go back to uh, Matthew chapter seven and verse two. All right. So just because you're in a role of judging somebody and you understand the the Bible, you know the commandments of God. That just because you know it, you're going to escape the I mean the, the judgment. No, you're going to be judged by the same judgment. All right. If you're in the midst of breaking the commandments. If you're in the midst of sin, you're going to get judged by the commandments. You ain't no better than nobody else. Whether you're rich, poor, you see what I'm saying, well-known, unknown, whatever the case may be, you, yourself, and anybody else that goes outside the laws of God will be judged by his laws. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, and verse 2. All right. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Uh-huh. And with what measures ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So now let's jump back up to verse 1 and, and read it in its full entirety. The book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Judge not that ye be not judged. So that's the famous quote that everybody know. Every sinner, every saint, everybody on planet earth know this scripture right here. When it comes to they're going to want to deflect or, or you know, uh, get out of something, when you know that you're guilty of it, this one of the main scriptures that people use to then go try to get away. Don't judge me. Now it become too pop. You see what I'm saying? Only God can judge me. That's not what the Bible is saying. Read it again. The book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Judge not that ye be not judged. So he said, listen, don't judge unless ye be judged. Read. For with that judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. So whatever judgment that you judge somebody else of, they're going to turn around and see if you're guilty of the same exact thing so they can judge you. That's how our people are. You point the finger at me, I'm pointing one back at you. Mm -hmm. Read. It shall be measured to you again. It shall be measured to you again. It's going to come right back to you. Come on. Mm -hmm. And why beholdest thy the moat and this is in thy brother's eye? Read it again. And why beholdest thy the moat that is in thy brother's eye. So he said, listen, why behold is the moat, the little small speck that is in your brother's eye, read, but consider it's not the beam that is in thy own eye. But you don't consider the big major sin that is in your eyes. You don't consider the thing that you blinded by. You see what I'm saying? Your brother may be only dealing with a small sin, not saying that none of the sins is, 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 uh, is better than the other, but the point is making here is that your brother may be in a small manner of sin. You see what I'm saying? But you, you're dealing with a heavier sin or heavier burden than your brother that you're accusing him of. You see what I'm saying? But you, yours is ten times worse than him. A prime example of what I'm talking about. Your brother or sister may have a, a problem with smoking weed. All right? But you, you sell the weed. You, you ain't going to manufacture the weed. 
You give the weed to everybody in the neighborhood. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But yet, you going to turn around and tell this brother, listen, hey, you should be smoking weed. That's crazy. You got to take that beam out of your eye. You got to take that biggest thing that you, that you got, or you deal with, out of, your, out of your eye first before you can deal with the little speck that's in your brother's eye. Because you're guilty of the same exact thing. Read. Or how will thy say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. So he's telling you, listen, how can you take the little mote out of your brother's eye when you got a big beam in yours? You can't do that. It's telling you first, you, what it's saying, crystal clear, is that you have to examine yourself first. Consider thyself. Clean up your own front door first before trying to go and help deal with somebody else, small no matter or situation that they may be dealing with. Clean up your big problem that you have first. Then you can see clearly to go and help your brother. Read. Thy hypocrite. He said what? Thy hypocrite. He calling this brother or this, this person a hypocrite. He said you're a hypocrite. You got a big beam in your eye. You guilty of a you guilty of a bigger problem than the other person, but yet you want to go be a judge. You want to correct somebody. Christ is getting on the calling these scribes and Pharisees. He said, y'all are hypocrites, man. That's what he's calling them. Thou hypocrite, read. First cast out the beam out of thy own eye. He said, first cast the beam out of your own eye. First correct yourself. Straight up your house first. Read. And then shall thy see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Then you can see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Once you get yourself right, and whatever problem that you're dealing with, then you can go and fix your brother. That's the clear-cut understanding on Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1. All right? All the way down. But with the problem that we have as so-called believers, all right? And what I say so-called, I'm talking about those that claim or classify themselves as Christians. All right? You quit to say, you know what? Judge not unless you be judged. But you fail to realize that you have to read the whole thing in its context to get the proper understanding. But a lot of our people like to isolate scriptures and just deal with that one part. Because why? They don't really want to receive the full understanding of what it's really saying. That's just a way to reflect and say, you know what? I don't want you judging me. Mind your business. I want to keep doing what I want to do. All right? So today, again, today's lesson is judge not unless you be judged. It's called understanding judgment and judging. All right, you got to understand the difference between the two. Understanding judging and judgment. All right, so from there, give me the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Because Christ was calling these people hypocrites. Why was he calling them hypocrites? Because you think you're going to escape the judgment of God because, oh, you in, you in a uh, role of leadership? That because, oh, you know a couple of precepts and now you, you know a little few switches to go ahead and try to correct your brothers and sisters, but yet it don't pertain to me. No, it pertains to every last one of us. I'm going to show you how God's word works. Read that. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. We're going here to show you how the word of God works. For the word of God is quick. It's quick. It's quick to straighten your life up. Read. And powerful. It's very strong. Come on. And sharper than any two-edged sword. It'll cut you down to the white meat even until your spirit. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Uh huh. Read. And of the joints and marrow. Read. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. All right. That's intended in your heart. Meaning it it discerns whether or not you have the ability to understand right from wrong. All right. Can you accept knowing that, you know what, hey, I'm guilty of being a hypocrite. You see what I'm saying? So it's quick to straighten you out. All right? If you really trust and believe in the word of God, it will straighten you out. Your spirit will be convicted to say, you know what, I can't say that to this person because I'm guilty of the same man as sin. You see what I'm saying? So that's how the word of God works. It's quick, and it will cut you down to the dangle marrow. That's right, yeah. It will straighten you out quick. All right? It'll, it'll correct you. All right? So now, again, let's not forget the title of today's class. Understanding judging and judgment. All right? So now, the next question is, well, can we judge? All right? Because we just clearly 
uh, laid out the understanding on Matthew chapter 7, all right, about understanding, you know, judge not unless you be judged. So now the question becomes, well, can we judge? Because a lot of people are just hell-bent on saying you can't judge, you can't judge. Well, let's see what the Bible says about can we judge, all right? Let's get that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. And this is, this is silly that, well, I wouldn't say it's silly, but it's kind of dang elementary for us to have to have classes like this explaining <laughs> judging and judgment because you got a book in the Bible called the Book of Judges. So it's like, it should be a no-brainer that we can judge. I can understand and say, you know what, we may not understand how to judge. And we'll cover some of those examples in a minute. Okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2 and verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. But he that is spiritual. He that is spiritual. Judges all things. Judges all things. Read on. Yet himself is judge of no man. But it says, yet he himself is judge of no man. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, if Matthew 7 and 1 says, judge not unless you be judged. But now we're reading here, it says that in 1 Corinthians, that is spiritual. he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet, he himself is not judge of no man. What is that saying? What it's saying is, he is not guilty of being a hypocrite. So that no man can then go turn around and point the finger at him because he's blameless of the sin that he is trying to correct you about. You see what I'm saying? That's what it's saying. So read it again. Verse 15. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 15. Yeah. But he that is spiritual. He that is spiritual. Let's deal with that part right there. Let's get Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. So what makes us spiritual? All right, let's find out. It's a he that is spiritual. This is how you get the proper understanding of the scriptures. Precepting it. Finding out what these words mean. So you can get the proper understanding. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. You got it? Let's just rub it together. Mm -hmm. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual, uh -huh. but I am carnal, soul under sin. Read it again from the top. The book of Romans, chapter 7, and verse 14. Uh -huh. For we know that the law we is... We know that the law is what? Spiritual. Is spiritual. So if the laws of God is spiritual, then that makes us what? Spiritual. So now let's go back and get the proper understanding. So the laws of God is a spiritual thing. Meaning these things like wearing fringes, it's a spiritual thing. It's not going to keep you from uh, being put to death by a bullet. You see what I'm saying? Wearing your bed is not going to keep you from being put to death. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, physically, no. It's going to keep you from being put to death spiritually. Because these are laws that the Most High gave us in spirit. So that we can govern ourselves and show that we fear him by applying his commandments. So by you applying the laws, statutes, and commandments, that makes you a spiritual being. Because the laws of God are spiritual. So read that. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse I mean, 2 and 15. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. Come on. But he that is spiritual. He that is spiritual that is keeping the laws of God. Judges all things. He can judge all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Yet he himself is not judge of no man. Why? Because he is not a hypocrite. He is keeping the laws of God because he is spiritual. So if he is a spiritual person and he's following the commandments of God, he can judge matters. So yes, we can judge. We can judge as long as we what? Keeping the commandments. All right? And we're not hypocrites of the commandments. All right? So from there, give me the book of John, chapter 7, and verse 24. The book of John, chapter 7, and verse 24. So yes, can we judge? Yes, we can judge. All right? The book of Judges, chapter 7, and verse 24. 
the book of John, chapter 7, verse 24. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 24. Uh-huh. Judge not according to the appearance. So the Bible commands us to judge not according to the appearance. Read. But judge righteous judgment. But we have to do what? Judge righteous judgment. We have to judge righteous judgments. All right? Righteous judgments. That's what we have to do. We have to command. We have to learn how to judge righteous judgment. So again, we're proving that we can judge. But we have to judge righteously. All right? The laws are righteous. The laws are spiritual. So you can't, they, they're interchangeable. They're the same exact thing. You see what I'm saying? You can't run away from it. You have to keep the commandments. If you're keeping the commandments, then you can judge. That's what the Bible is crystal clear is saying. You can judge based on you keeping the commandments. All right? If I, have, if I don't have a beard on my face, I can't go and tell this brother, hey, you know what I'm saying? You know you got to have a beard on your face. Because first thing you're going to say, well, where your beard at? You see what I'm saying? So yes, you can't be guilty of the sin that you're trying to accuse somebody else of. You got to be on point, is what the Bible is saying. You got that? Yeah. Okay, so now let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. I'm going to show you some more places where we can judge. Chapter 6 and verse 2. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Come on. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? Read that again. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? Don't you know? Don't you all know that the saints of God should judge the world? The world was made for our sake. So yes, if we keep in the commandments, the saints are the Israelites. All right? We can prove, let's get this proof there because somebody might be asking, well, yeah. you ain't no saint. The saint ain't talking about a saint like how you was taught. In, in, in this society that a saint is like a mother Mary. That ain't a saint. You see what I'm saying? A saint are Israelites and they can only be Israelite. I'm going to prove this. Give me that Psalms 148 and verse 114. The book of Psalms 148 and verse 14. And we're coming right back. All right. To 1 Corinthians. The book of Psalms 148 and verse 14. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 148 and verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. He also exalted the horns of his people. Who is his people? Read. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. These people are his people. They are his horns. They are the ones that he exalted. All right? To be saints. Read. Even of the children of Israel. Even of the what? Even of the children of Israel. The children of Israel, read. A people near unto him. So now, who are the saints? The Israelites. The Israelites are God's saints. All right, so now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Read. Do ye know not that the saints shall judge the world? Do ye not know that the saints should judge the world? That's the question. Read. And if the world shall be judged by you, and if the world be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? No, you're not worthy. As long as you're keeping the commandments of God. If you're keeping the commandments of God, guess what? You can judge the world. And the world he's making reference to is the world of Israel. Let's get that. Isaiah 45 and 17. Because some people may be watching this video and thinking that, oh, it's the world's top of the whole planet. That's why, again, we got to keep reiterating this. You have to read the Bible precept upon precept. Line upon line, here a little, and there a little in the Bible. That's how you're going to get the understanding. Keeping these things in its proper context. All right? Let's get that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. Uh-huh. But Israel. By who? But Israel. Read shall be saved in the Lord. So let's make that clear. Let's establish that. Only Israel is going to be saved. Not everybody on planet Earth. Israel is only going to be saved. Read. And the Lord with an everlasting salvation. And it's going to be an everlasting salvation. Nobody going to ever be able to take that away from us. Read. And you shall not be ashamed. And we're not going to be ashamed about that thing. 
nor confounded, nor confounded, world without end. What does he call the world of Israel? World without end. He's called the children of Israel a world without end. A world without end. All right. So now let's drop that and let's get me uh, the, book of, uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter nineteen and verse seventeen. Leviticus 19 and verse 17. So can we judge? Yes. Yes. We now went through three precepts to prove that. All right. Leviticus 19 and verse 17. Basic precept. Nothing, nothing deep. Just straightforward. Read. The book of Levitic, Leviticus. In chapter 19 and verse 17. Come on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So he said, thou shalt not hate thy brother in your heart. Read. Thy shall in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. We should do what? Thy shall in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. What do the word rebuke mean? Let me help you out. The word rebuke means to correct. All right? It's to judge. <laughs> That's what the word rebuke means. You see what I'm saying? All this time in, in Christianity, we've been taught that, you know, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. All that person really saying is, listen, I, I, correct, you I correct you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> But you know, we don't Christian study church. words, man. A Christian church. That Christian church is like our, our brother always say, it's stronger than daggone crack. Mm -hmm. He said, it's stronger than crack. It's worse than crack. You see what I'm saying? Yes. All praise to the most high for putting the spades on them, brothers. Mm -hmm. But what he's saying is absolutely 100% correct. Mm -hmm. But all he's simply saying is, you have the power to judge, correct, reprove, mm -hmm. or rebuke your neighbor. And not what? And not suffer sin upon him. And not suffer sin upon him. So yes, we have the power to correct our brothers and sisters. Give me another Leviticus 5 and 1. Let's get that one. Leviticus 5 and 1. The book of Leviticus, chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh-huh. And if a soul sin. Uh-huh. So if you see a soul in the midst of sin, read. And hear the voice of swearing. And you hear it. And is a witness, and you witness it, whether he had seen or known of it, you are aware of what's going on, read. If he do not utter it, and if you don't say nothing about it, then he shall bear his iniquity. So why would you have to say something about it if that is not telling you that you have the power to do what? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Or judge your neighbor. You have the power to correct. That's all. But the point I'm trying to establish is, Judging according to the Bible when they're coming and dealing with us as showing our brothers the errors of their ways, that's the judging that the Bible is talking about. That you correct your brother or sister with the word of God. That's what judging means according to the Bible when it comes to us judging one another. Correcting, reproving. That's what it means. That's all it's saying. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have the power to judge. judge. But we have to do it in order. You have to judge righteous, righteous judgment. judgment. You, can't, you can't judge according to the appearance. You have to judge according to the word of God. You have to do your due diligence and inquire about what's really going on before you automatically just bring down a hammer and accuse somebody or something without you doing your research about what's really going on. Ask the proper questions. Ask the right questions. So yes, we can judge. Alright, so from there, let's get the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 1 and verse 15. Let's start there. We're going to read verse 15 all the way down to 17. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 15. Come on. So I took the chief of your tribe, uh -huh. wise man, come on, and known, and made them heads over you. So he made them rulers over some of the Israelites. Read. Captains over thousands. So we got captains. And captains over hundred. All right. And captains over fifty. Read. And captains over ten. Read on. And officer among your tribe. And we got officers. So now we understand that it's captains and it's officers. All right. People that's in a position of authority to be over a group of people. Read. And I charge your judges. And I call. And I charge your what? Your judges, your judges, at, at that time, come on, saying, read, have the cause between your brothers, read on, and judge righteously 
between every man and his brother uh -oh. and the stranger that is with him. So he said he commanded us to judge righteously between our brothers and the strangers. We have to judge righteously between them. How do we do that? By applying the laws of God. You got to know them. That's why I tell you at the top. Verse 15. Read verse 15 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 15. Uh huh. So I took the chief of your tribe. The main ones of your tribes. Come on. Wise men. Wise men. Meaning they have a level of wisdom. When you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. I think it's verse 6 and 5. It's like a 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 5 and 6. Where it says... Keeping the commandments is our wisdom. That what gives you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is applying the laws of God. That's how you gain wisdom. Read on. And known. Mm -hmm. Known. Meaning they know to do what? Keep the commandments of God. They are known in the congregation as being wise men that fear the most high and keep the commandments. Read. And made them heads over you. And make them leaders over you. That's, that's all it's saying. So now jump down to verse 17 again. Verse 17, mm -hmm. ye shall not respect persons in judgment. So he said, while you are judging, now that you're overseers of these people, he's leading the charge for the overseers, the captains, the officers, all right? Those are a position of authority. He said, listen, you cannot be a respecter of persons in judgment, in judgment, all right? Meaning when it's time to hand down who gets what, you see what I'm saying? How to correct this individual, you have to do it according to the laws of God. All right? And you can't be a respecter of person. Meaning, you can't say, well, oh, well, since it's my homeboy, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, you know, judge him. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to turn a blind eye to that. No. Your buddy, your, your road dog, your, 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 your mama, your daddy, your sister, whoever it is, your best friend, whoever, they are not to be put aside are exempt from the laws of God. It has to be fixed. It, yeah. <laughs> it has to be straightforward. You got to fix it. You got to fix it. You can't run away from it. You got to deal with it head on and fix the problem and move on. And it has to be done fairly. It's a judge. It's a judge. All right. That, that keep things on the up and up. All right. So read on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 17. Uh -huh. You shall not respect person in judgment. So don't respect the persons in judgment. That's going into your friends, your families, all right? Those that you hold dear to you. Read on. But ye shall hear the small as well as the great. So whatever is a small issue, as far as somebody just saying, hey, this person stole this my, my cup. You see what I'm saying? Whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. You hear that matter, you deal with that. Read. You shall not be afraid of the face of man. And, it's, and whether it's a great issue, you got to deal with the big matters. If it's dealing with somebody, hey, say, you know what, hey, this person uh, killed my, my, uh, my family my, or my mm -hmm. oxen or whatever the case may be. Whatever the heavier matter is, no matter how small or how great it is, you have to deal with those issues. All right? And he said, don't be afraid of the faces of the men. All right, come on. For the judgment is God. Because the judgment belongs to God. Again, the day's title of the day's class is Understanding Judging and Judgment. And he said what? For the judgment is God. Is God. So who give, or who rains down the ultimate judgment? The Most High God. That's who is in control of the judgment. Our job is to correct you and say, listen, for this, that, and the third, the Most High says this about that. You now get forewarned about what your punishment may be going forward for your actions. We have to then wait on the most high to, 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 to say, you know what? I'm going to rain down this judgment on that person the way I see fit. All right? And we'll cover ways on how to kind of uh, combat that or keep that from happening or making a judgment heavier on you, for lack of better words. All right? To make it a little bit lighter on you. Because sometimes people get puffed up in their spirit. And be like, you know, I'll just keep sending, keep sending, yeah. you know, hey, it is what it is. I'll just take my eyes on my back. I'll, I'll take it on the chin. You don't want to play those games when it comes to the most high. All right? That's a, it's, a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the most high. All right? Finish that up. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me. Mm -hmm. And I will hear it. And he will hear it. So now let's jump over to uh, chapter 16. All right? 
This is Moses talking to the children of Israel in the wilderness, all right? So now Moses had the, the, the responsibility of setting up these uh, judges, okay, and these officers, all right, captains, to be rulers over the people of Israel, all right? So now he was doing this thing to the point where he was weighing himself out. So his father-in-law, which is an Egyptian, gave him a good idea to say, you know what, you you killing yourself. You see what I'm saying? Go and set these people up and let them do X, Y, Z. The Spirit of God was on Jethro to then go give Moses the idea to do this thing. All right? So don't think for a second that the Most High can't use these other nations. He does. And he's been proven to use them all the whole time, from the, from the time of creation up until now. But don't get it twisted. That don't mean for one second, just because he used them to do certain things or to treat you well, that now they're going to somehow get the kingdom. No, it don't mean that one bit. All right? He does whatever he see fit, or whomever he see fit, but he does not change. All right? The judgment for the other nations is slavery or is death. It's just that simple. And we're going to cover that. All right? I just want to make sure I get that crystal clear and get that out there. Because somebody can watch the video and be like, you know what? Yeah, see? He just, mm -hmm. he just contradicted himself. You know what I'm saying? God used whoever he wanted to use. Yes. Because you got to remember, our people was in captivity. Still is. And we, yeah, we still are. You're right. So read that. Oh. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 18. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18. Uh huh. Judges and officer shall thy make thee and all thy gate. He says what? Judges and officer shall thy make thee and all thy gate. He said, listen, God said you got to make judges and officers in all your gates. Wherever we was at, we had judges and officers. The point that we trying to draw out of this is everywhere that you go and throughout life, whether you're in the world of uh, 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 sports, uh, uh, whatever it is, it's always somebody that's there to correct you. Period. To judge you. To critique you. Read. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribe. Throughout our tribe. Read on. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. And they shall do what? Judge the people with just judgment. And they should judge the people with righteous judgment. Again, we can't escape it. It's in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. We always have people there to correct us and tell us where we're going off. And that should be a good thing. You should always want somebody to govern over you and say, you know, hey, you might not want to do this right here. You might want to go down this path rather than that path. You see what I'm saying? You want that person to kind of tug you and let you know when you're going off. You're going to have to keep doing it over. Exactly. It's like running to a dang on brick wall. You keep doing the same thing over. Eventually, you're going to kick the wall dang on till your feet get busted up. And nobody telling you, listen, hey, that's a stupid idea. It's not going to do anything. I don't, I don't know why you're doing it. Come on, man. Use common sense, all right? So from there, we always had order, all right, and commands when it comes to judging, all right? It's always been like that. The Most High is about order, and he's about structure, all right? He always had people in place to correct you and reprove you when it comes to the term of judging, all right? But ultimately, the Most High is the ultimate judge. He is the one that rained down judgment. He has the final say, all right? So from there, let's get the book of Deuteronomy 32 and verse uh, 39. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. All right? Because whenever you teach, you have to prove these things. All right? The Bible says you got to prove all things. So now, when I say it's the difference between judging and judgment, judging comes from us correcting one another. All right? Judgment comes from the Most High God. And we're going to show you here in this scripture. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. Come on. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. He said, listen, I'm the first, the last, beginning, and end, and there's no other God with me. Period. Read. I kill. I do what? I kill. He kills. And I make alive. And he make alive. Read. I wound. He wounds. And I heal. And he have the ability to heal. Read. 
Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So what does this say? That the most high God is the one that does the judgment. Keep that in mind. Judgment is the Lord. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 17. Uh, 1 and verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 17. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. You should not respect persons in judgment. But ye shall hear the small as well as the great. We're going back to this for a reason. Read. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. Come on. For the judgment is God. For what? For the judgment is God. For the judgment is God. We got to keep driving at home. It's a difference. We can come out here and we can correct. But we don't have the power to cast down judgment. Or condemn anyone. That's the Lord. That's his doing. And it has an S on the end. It's exactly. Judgment is the Lord's. It belongs to him. He has the power. We just read what his judgment is. He has the power to what? Kill and make a lie. Heal and then wound. He has the power to do all things. Because he's the, he's the dang old, uh, creator of heaven and earth. He can do whatever he sees fit. Keep that in mind, man. Axe Pharaoh. Yeah, Axe Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now let's get uh let's get First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse twenty nine, all right. First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse twenty nine, all right. So now I hope y'all understand that so far the difference between judging and judgment. We just covered that we can judge. Yes, that's a fact. All right. Judgment and sentencing and condemnation that comes from the Most High God. He is the one that's behind all that. That's His office. That's His job. He passed down the judgment. For us breaking certain dang old sins, uh, certain commandments, and then, hey, he said, you know what, hey, I'm going to give him this, that, and the third. All right? He's going to pass down the judgment. So now, let's deal with the different forms of judgment that comes from the Heavenly Father. All right? You already said that he heals and he make alive. You know what I'm saying? He wounds. And he, he kills he and he... Kills and he make alive. Uh-huh. And he wounds and he heals. And he heals. Okay? So now, let's find out the different types of forms of judgment that... The most high deals with. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 29. Come on. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. So this is the communion, okay? Read. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Come on. Not discerning the Lord's body. Come on. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. For many and are weak and sickly among you. And many sleep. And many sleep. He said, for there is what? Many, that is what? That is sick. That is sick. And weak among you. And weak among you. And many sleep. So it says three things. He said, there is many that is sick. So let's deal with the sick part. Give me some rock, chapter 38, and verse 15. Let's deal with the sick part. Because he said, there is many of us that is, that is among us that is sick. What did he mean by they are sick? All right? This is dealing with the forms of judgment that the Most High brings down. All right? Read that. And the Apocrypha, the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, uh -huh. chapter 38, verse 15. Read. He that sinneth before his maker. So it says, he that sinneth before his maker, his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Read. Let him fall into the hands of the physician. Let him fall into the hands of the physician. So what do we have physicians for? Physicians are on earth to do what? To heal. To heal. All right? Heal you from what? Sicknesses, illnesses. So when he said many are sickly among you, it's because you have fallen or we have fallen in some form, shape, or fashion of sin. All right? And the Most High rains down that judgment on us for breaking his commandments. Let me give you an uh, example of that. One reason that you would have to go and see a physician, all right, because you're sick, and because the Bible commands us to do it, not be gluttony, not to be eating a whole lot of food. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you so fixated on this, you gotta eat, 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 eat. We have people that have that issue, man, and they don't see it. But God said that's a sin. Gluttony is a sin. So guess what? By you eating too much or by you eating the wrong food, not adhering to the dang old dietary laws in the Bible, now you have to go and see a physician. 
That right there is a form of breaking God's commandments, and that right there is a form of judgment from the Most High God. Yes, oh yes, believe it. Gluttony is a sin. So guess what? When you do that, you got to go and see a doctor for that reason. Yeah. All right? Another form of that going to be uh, having to go and see a physician is maybe it comes from you uh, going out here sleeping around with all kinds of daggone people. You see what I'm saying? And, and hey, not a heed to the laws of marriage. Okay? We all not done it. We was out there in the world. Okay? You get burned, you got to go and see what? A physician. That's judgment from the Most High God. So when he said there's many sickly among you, that's what he's making reference to. So now let's deal with the weak. All right, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 13. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 13. He said, many of you are sickly and weak. The book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. Come on. A merry heart make it the cheerful continent. So when your heart is full of joy, you make others around you uh, happy. Read. But by sorrow of the heart, the but by sorrow of the heart, by of the mind, read. The spirit is broken. The spirit is broken. It is broken. That's a form of being weak and sorrow. All right? You having a sorrow uh, uh, heart. And you got, a, you got a heavy spirit. Your spirit is just so heavy to the point where, you know, you can't never seem to even want you know, to get out of bed sometimes. You have some people that fall into, uh, what do they call it? Uh, depression. depression. But they just can't. They don't even want the windows to be open. They want to just stay in their soul. They want to lie, lie and wallow in their mess. They don't want to even leave the bed. That's a form of that going judgment from the most high God. All right? For us, for doing what? Breaking his commandments. These are things that he's telling you crystal clear. What sin is a result of? Sin leads to judgment from the Most High God. So he said, many among you will be sick and weak, all right? And then he said, many of you what? Sleep. So everybody should be able to figure out now what he mean by sleep. But just in case you don't know this yet, let's get Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. All right? So we're dealing with the forms of judgment that the Most High reigns down on us for breaking his commandments. Understanding judgments is different from judging. All right? The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. Come on. For the wages of sin is death. So the penalty for breaking God's commandments is what? Death. Is death. Read. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So now, in order for you to have eternal life, you have to be keeping the commandments of God. So what it's saying ultimately here is the penalty when it says the, for the wages of sin is death. Meaning your judgment for breaking God's commandment ultimately is death. All right. It's talking about the first initial, initial death, but it's also going into the second death. Because if you come into the truth and you learn these commandments and you uh, got put to death in the midst of your sin and you have not repented of those things. Then you're going to wake up again to the second death, all right, which is the lake of fire, all right? And a lot of people don't believe that, but that they stuff exists. In that second death. They don't believe in the second death. They think once you die, that's it. You go into the, to the dirt and you rot, and then that's it. Yes, your, this body does that, yes, but the spirit goes back into the heavenly father. And then it stands after, for whatever reason, until he decides to come back and say, you know what? Time to dang on, uh, that spirit got to stand before the Most High God and get judged. All right? You're going to you're gonna receive that judgment from him then and that day. All right? So from there, let's give me the book of... Uh, matter of fact, let's read that. Revelation uh, 20. Let's go to Revelation 20. The book of Revelation chapter 20. And I want verse uh, 12. Start there. A lot of people don't believe, like you say, they don't believe in the second death. They don't think that stuff exists. He wouldn't put it in there if it, if it didn't exist. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 12. Come on. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. So he said, I saw the dead, small and great. Small uh, uh, people that didn't have a whole lot of statue on this earth. You see what I'm saying? As well as great and mighty men. That had many stuff on earth, plenty of riches. 
All right? That's going into your athletes, you know what I'm saying? Your actors, your celebrities. All right? And then you had the, just the regular old men that worked a nine to five that nobody really didn't know. All right? Read. And the books were open. And the books of those people was open. Read. And another book was open. And then it was a second book. So you got two books that's open. Boom. Boom. You got another book that's open. Read. Which is the book of life. One is the book of life. Read. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work. So now you got the book that is the, is the records of the things that you did in your life. That book has to match up with the Holy Bible. All right? If your life does not reflect this Bible, then he said you should be what? Cast into what? The lake of fire. We're going to get it. Right. Read on. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell deliver up the dead which were in them. Mm -hmm. And they were judged. And, and they were what? And they were judged. And those dead spirits was judged. The Most High got them back up for time for judgment, and he judged those spirits. The first judgment you get is when you leave, when you leave this body. When you put the death out here in these streets or by, you know, uh, being sick or whatever the case may be, once you dead, that's the first death. The second death is when your spirit stands before the Most High and you have to give account for, you have to give account for your actions on the earth or what you did inside that earthly body that you was in. That spirit has to be judged too. Read. And they were judged every man according to their works. And they were judged according to their works, the things that they do. You have faith without work is dead. Read. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And it says death and hell was cast into what? The lake of fire. Read. This is the second death. So now, what do you get off by saying that it's no such thing as a, a, a second a death? Second death. Uh, it's not going to be a lake of fire. The Bible says it. It's going to happen. You're going to die again. You're going to die again. He said, and those things was cast into the lake of fire. All right? This, read. Read this. verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life. And those who was not found in the book of life. So it says, death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. And then it says, and those whosoever was not found in the book of life. You are keeping the commandments. You're going to receive the judgment of the most high God. Which is the second death where you get cast into that lake of fire. And you burn for eternity. All right. So now we just wanted to prove that. All right. So yes, it is a judgment for the unrepentant. So now what about those that have persecuted God's people? Do you think that God is an unjust God? That he's not going to recompense those that did harm to his people? No, God is a just God. And they're going to get theirs too. Two quick basic scriptures that we love that they're going to meditate on. We know that, you know, in our sleep. Let's get it. You know what I want. Isaiah 14. Let's get that one. Let's get Isaiah first. Let's get the Old Testament. And then we're going to get it in the, New, in the New Testament too. All right, Isaiah 14 and verse 21. Let's get that. Because our oppressors are going to get judged too. Do that mean that now they are part of the covenant? Because they're going to receive a judgment from the Most High? No. That's a different type of judgment. They're getting judged for the thing they did to God's people. We're getting judged for breaking His commandments. Because the commandment was only given unto Israel. It was never given to the other nations. But they have to answer to the Most High too. Because why? He created them as well. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 21. Uh -huh. Prepare slaughter for his children. To do what? Prepare slaughter for his children. So the Bible is commanding us to prepare slaughter for his children. Read. For the iniquity of their fathers. This is talking about the heathen nation. Because the Most High is coming back to redeem his people. And we have to prepare slaughter for their fathers. All right? For their children. For the things that their fathers did. How do we do that? By they going to come out and tell them what they did to us. Making them own up to it. Even though a lot of them won't own up to it because it's in their spirit. But we have to cast down the lies and imaginations. 
We got to reveal the wicked. The wicked has to be revealed. Read. That they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor for the face of the world which city. So now, let's get to another one. Let's get the other one in Re uh, Revelation. Revelation 13 and 9. So yes, the other nations, those that oppressed us, they got judgment coming to them as well. They have judgment coming to them as well. Start at verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9. Uh -huh. If any man have an ear, let him hear. So now it's starting off by being crystal clear. So listen, if you have any level of understanding about what is about to be said, let him listen. Listen good. Breathe. He that lead it into captivity. So for those that had other people in captivity, all right, by way of slave ship, by being in servitude, by they going to be oppressed from day in to day out, from sun up to sun down. You see what I'm saying? Can never get ahead. Always striving, but never could really make it. All right? Those people that was in captivity was the Israelites back in ancient times. Even all the way up until today, 2019. Those of you that fit the transatlantic slave trade, your people were in captivity. Those of you that fit the, uh, the sub-Saharan slave trade, your people were in captivity. And those that had your people in captivity are going into captivity. Read. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Read on. He that killeth with his sword must be killed with his sword. Those that had our people in captivity and killed them by the sword, he said, listen, they are going to be killed with the sword. Again, this may not sound like your average dad on Sunday school teaching, but we're not here to give you that no more. We're giving you the truth. Whether you hear or whether you forbid. That's what does say the Lord. Those that led into captivity, your punishment is going into captivity. Those that killed the sword, you must be killed the sword. Giving you what it was hiding from you all these years. Yeah, ain't not dipping that go keeping this a big secret. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because they, they glorify it in movies. Yeah. They put it in books. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the thing that they knew that we would not ever want to do is what? Read. Read. He said, if you want to hide anything from a black man, put it in what? A book. And they know the Christian church is not going to tell you. No, because they get paid to teach you lies. All right, they, they they take their little trinkets and you know, hey, they feel good. They're, those are those are uh, those your house uh, Negroes today. Yeah, that filthy Luca. Yeah, that filthy Luca. <laughs> All right, so let's get that. So yes, our oppressors will be facing some type of judgment in the last days when the Most High come back. You gotta finish this out. Finish that out. Here's the patient and the faith of the saint. So he said, listen, you gotta be patient. And you got to be praying for that thing to come. All right? Because that's our dang uh, 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 way of feeling like we, we, got just, we got justice for the things that happened to our forefathers. We seeking that justice. You see what I'm saying? We want that justice. You see what I'm saying? And it's funny. Justice comes with judgment. Judgment. And judging. So we're going to deal with the JJJ today. That's what it's all about. Judgment and judging. And we want justice. That's what we want for our people. All right? And it's going to happen as long as we have the what? Patient and the faith of the same. Okay? In Christ Jesus. That's what we have. All right? And that's what we're praying for. And it's going to happen. I believe that thing. All right? So now from there, let's get me, uh, let's read a quick story real quick about one of our forefathers and how he dealt with uh, being judged. All right? A mighty man. All right? First Samuel chapter 12. Well, 2 Samuel, I'm sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 1 through 16. All right? Because the Bible says, whatever things is written before time is written for what? Our learning. All right? So we're going to go and dive back into history and look at one of the greatest men that was written about in the Bible. All right? And how he dealt with being judged. Because sometimes we think that when we get uh, to a certain point in life, especially as older people, we don't, we feel like we can't be judged by those that are younger. Or we can't be judged by those that, you know, that don't quite have the uh, understanding on, on, on certain things. But when sin 
is presented, it doesn't matter who it is. When God sends somebody to judge you for what you're doing, he will send it in a way that you won't like it. You won't receive it. All right? But listen to how King David dealt with his judgment. Read that. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 1. Uh -huh. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him. So now, God sent Nathan, the prophet, unto David. All right? Remember, David was the king. All right? Mm -hmm. He was over everybody in Israel at that time. Read. And said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. So now, just to give y'all a backdrop of what's going on right now, okay? What happened is before, you read about, everybody know the story, well, supposedly everybody know the story about King David, okay? And one of the greatest sins that he committed was sleeping with another man's wife, okay? And then try to cover it up by having the brother put to death, okay? So that's where we lead up right now, okay? Nathan was sent to David, the king, to try to find a way to explain to him his sin and make it, uh, make him eat it, make him deal with it, make him own up to it. All right. So he decided to go about and give the, the king a certain uh, uh, story so he can figure out how to present it to the king in a respectable manner. Because the reason why I'm dressing it up this way is because a lot of us don't have no decorum on how to address certain situations. It's like it's like you don't. They don't read the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, yeah. uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes that tells you about, you know, it's a time and place and how to deal with every certain situation. You see what I'm saying? So just to show you all that this prophet had a way to knowing how he have a level of wisdom and understanding on how to govern his speech when dealing with the king. All right. Somebody of, of great stature. But he was not afraid to tell him, listen. You are in the midst of sin. Mm -hmm. All right? So just take that as a token and then go, you know, meditate on that. Read. Verse 2. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds. So now he's giving us a parable about the rich man. He said he had many uh, exceeding flocks and herds. Read. But the poor man had nothing. But the poor man didn't have much. Read. Save one little ewe lamb. Uh-huh. Which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him. So now, basically, this ewe lamb represents Uriah's wife. That's all he had. Read. And with his children, it did eat of his own meat. Uh-huh. And drank of his own cup. Come on. And lay in his bosom. Uh-huh. And was unto him as a daughter. So now, it was, greatly, it was a great possession unto him. Even though that's all he had, listen, he cherished that thing. It was his. Read. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, mm -hmm. and he spared to take of his own flock. So he decided not to take of his own flock, read, and, 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 and help the traveler, read. And of his own herd, mm -hmm. to dress for the wayfaring man that was coming to him. Come on. But took the poor man's land. But he took the poor man, and so this is Nathan giving David a dango scenario. He said, listen, but this rich man, he had many great things, much, but he decided not to even dangle give of his own. He wanted to give it of the dangle poor man's house. Read. And dress it for the man that was come to him. Mm -hmm. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. So now David got pissed off about this story. He's like, listen, Nate, this man, hey, I'm pissed off at him. I'm mad. David got upset. Read. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that had done this thing shall surely die. So now, you got to pause and meditate. He said, the man that did this thing shall surely die. So now, David had already forgotten about his own sin. Because he thought he had got away with it. He was that man. You see what I'm saying? But watch what Nathan tells him. Read. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold. Because he did this thing. Mm -hmm. And because he had no pity. And because the brother didn't have no pity. So what Nathan is trying to describe to David is that, listen, you did this thing and you didn't have no pity. You didn't consider the poor man that didn't have much. You had all these dang women that you could choose from, but you decided to go to sleep with Uriah's wife. Read. And Nathan says to David, uh -huh. 
Thy art the man. He said what? Thy art the man. Nathan told David, he said, listen, you are that man that I'm talking about. Read. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, mm. I anoint thee king over Israel, and I deliver thee out of the hand of Saul. So now jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. Uh -huh. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. So now I want to establish one thing. Nathan was a prophet. He had to go to David and tell him what he did was wrong. But you see the way that he dressed it up? You see that way he delivered it? It was decent and it was done in a timely fashion to the point where David understood it. Not all of us may possess that dang old ability to be able to dang old come and correct our mothers, our fathers, you see what I'm saying, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, you see what I'm saying, but you have to learn how to take uh, uh, ideas from the story and find a way to present these things to those that are seeing it to you, all right? Those that, that may not uh, have the same understanding that you have right now as far as how to keep the law, statutes, and commandments and persuade them into this truth. You got to find a way to know how to correct them with season, all right? Know how to salt and flavor these things, all right? So now, David uh, uh, acknowledged his sin, all right? And what did David do? And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also had put away thy sin. So the Lord forgave David for what he did. Read. Thy shall not die. He said, you should not die. But what's going to happen? Read. How be it? Because by this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. Mm -hmm. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So now, the Most High spared David life, but he still gave him a judgment. What was the judgment? He put the dang on child that what Uriah wife was going to give birth to, to death. So what? None of us escapes judgment from the Most High God. However he does it, it's up to him. All right? But the one thing you got to take in consideration is when you know that you did wrong, you have to apply what David did. David acknowledged his sin and he confessed it unto who? The Most High God. And he was sincere about it. So now, did that mean he wasn't going to get judged? No, he got judged. All right? But that's only for the, the most high to determine how he's going to go about dealing with that situation. He fasted. And he fasted. He prayed. He fasted. He, said, he did all these different things to show that he was sincere about what he did. All right? That he felt some kind of dang old guilt or, or remorse about, the, about his actions. All right? Some of us, we can just care less. You know what I'm saying? We'll just do whatever. Hey, it is what it is. I'm going to just keep doing me, bro. It is what it is. You know, it'll catch it with me. It'll catch it with me. You can't have that kind of attitude. You cannot have that. Okay? So now, let's jump down from there. Let's go to... Uh, uh, let's see if I want that. Mm, we can leave that one alone. So David had the ability to, to, to uh, repent of his sins, okay? And acknowledge what he did was wrong, but he still received judgment. All right? So from there, give me the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Uh -huh. Son of a man, Come on. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Uh -huh. Therefore, hear the words at my mouth and give them warning from me. And give them what? And give them warning from me. So he said he commanded the men to go out and warn his people. All right? Read. When I say unto the wicked, thy shall surely die. Uh -huh. And thy givest him not warning, Read. nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. To do what? To save his life. So when you see the brothers out there on the street screaming at the top of their lungs, trying to provoke our people to dang on righteousness, just know that they're doing it out of love. They're warning. What we're going to hear this prove to you is that there's warning before judgment. It's warning before destruction. Read. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. So that same wicked man should die in his iniquity if we don't go out there and warn him. Read. But his blood will I require at thy hand. So now we know the command. We know what the rules are. And we decide to say, you know, I'm not going to say nothing to him because I'm afraid. You know what I'm saying? He a, he a game banger. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, uh, that's my mama. That's my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's pastor such and such. He, he he uh, baptized me uh, four or five times. You know what I'm saying? 
craziness in itself, but still. Uh, you're afraid to go and approach these people, so you took a gamble on your life being destroyed because you didn't do what God commands you to do, which is to warn them from the destruction or the judgment that is set before them. Read on. Yet if I warn the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness. But now, this is the flip side. He said, but yet if you do warn the wicked, and they choose not to turn away from their wicked ways, what happens? Nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. That wicked person shall die in their iniquity. Read. But thy hast delivered thy soul. But you, on the other hand, will not die. Because why? You did what God commanded you to do. And that's to warn his people. All right? What is the one that he gave us back in ancient time? All right? Before we was in, in, in uh, slavery. Under the time of Moses. He told him, listen, I'm giving you laws, statutes, and commandments. You got right set before you blessings and curses. All right? He warned us. He warned us. But what did we do? We choose to disobey. And then now we suffer in the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And it's still following us to this day because he said these curses should be upon you for a sign and for a wonder and upon your seeds forever. All right? So what are we reading? The Bible. What are we proving? That you have to obey God's commandments and warn your brothers and sisters. All right? So now, it's always warning before judgment. All right? So now, when we out there judging and we are warning the people, what tends to happen right after that? Our people tend to stand on scoff. You know what I'm saying? They tend to dangle and start speaking evil about you. They want to bring up your old past. They want to dangle and find all kind of ways to dangle and ridicule you. You see what I'm saying? Because why? What the problem is? Ultimately, the bottom line is our people hate correction. They hate being judged for what they're doing wrong. But they'll stand up in the dangle court system before the so-called white man and get judged all day long and would not tell them you can't judge me. You know the Bible says judge not unless you be judged. I have yet to see anybody stand up in the court of Daniel Law and say, judge not unless you be judged. Mm. And if they do, all you're going to do is sit there and laugh at you. Yeah. Like, what, what are you talking about? You're going to you get the sentence, you're going to take the sentence, and you're going to then gonna get locked up and you're going to just deal with it. It is what it is. All right? So now let's deal with that. Why do our people hate correction? Because they do not like to be judged. All right, so now let's get that in the book of Amos chapter 5 and verse 10. The book of Amos chapter 5 and verse 10. All right, our people do not like to be judged. And rightfully so. When you make a mistake, yeah, you, you kind of tend to be like, oh, snap, somebody going to get me. All right, but we got to get out of that mindset. When somebody sees that you're doing something wrong and they correct you, you need to take that as, like, you know what, I appreciate that, brother. Man, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know I was out of order like that. You see what I'm saying? Because they're saving your life. Our people, they can't stand that. Oh, no. Don't tell me that. I'm grown. I'm grown. The book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 10. Come on. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They love him. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They don't care. They, mean they, they, they hate that person that rebukes at the gate. What did the word rebuke mean? It means correct. To, correct. to reprove. All right? To judge. They hate those that rebuke at the gate. Read. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. And they hate those that come out there and speak the word of God. When we out there reading the Bible, all we're doing is speaking the word of God uprightly. And we're showing the people the errors of their ways. Because guess what? We ourselves was on those street corners doing the same exact thing. And don't think for a second it's because we out here teaching that, you know, oh, we 100% because we're not. We're not 100%. God said in that last day, he's going to have the dagger clean. He got to change us in the twinkling of an eye. That alone lets you know that, hey, it's still going to be some level of sin in you that he has to fully purge out of you when he come back. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That's what the Christian church will tell you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. When all that word rebuke means, it means to correct. So when you tell somebody, listen, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. What you're saying is, I correct you in the name of Jesus. Come on, man. All this time that we've taught lies in the Christian church, I pray that you brothers and sisters come out of that madness, man. Come out of that. 
They actually think they got some actually kind of spiritual power mm -hmm. to really rebuke a demon out of you. Yeah. Come on, man. Listen. Let's be real, man. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it 100. The word rebuke just means to correct. Correct. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. What are you rebuking? Are you telling them what they're doing wrong? You got to show his people their transgress, their transgression. All right? So that's what word rebuke means in the Bible, okay? So now let's get that in, uh, uh, let's get uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes uh, 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Uh-huh. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. All right. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Come on. Because sentence against an evil work is not ex executed. Executed. Executed speedily. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the heart of the Son of Man is fully set in them to do evil. So now, since because we don't get quick justice or quick judgment on us like right away, our mindset is stand fast on staying in the midst of our sin. We feel like, you know, hey, I got away with it this time. You know what I'm saying? Let me see how far I can keep going. You don't really take the time to say, you know what, well, let me dial back the stuff that I am doing. You know what I'm saying? Instead of me dang on uh, uh, smoking, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, five blunts a dang on day, let me learn to kind of wean myself off it. Let me dial down to this maybe four and work my way up to I dang on don't have to smoke none at all. You know what I'm saying? You got to start somewhere is what we're saying. None of us is perfect, all right? But you have to start somewhere. What we're saying is judgment or being corrected, it don't happen right away, all right? And our people tend to get into that lackadaisical sense of, you know what, hey, it is what it is, man. It ain't, ain't happened to me before. I've been doing this all my life, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm good. You think because you've been eating pork all your life that you know, hey, you're still alive, you 80 some years old, 70, 60 years old, eating pork all your life, and you think, oh, well, shoot, ain't nothing happening to me. I'm, I'm living my life all this time just fine. I'm going to continue to do it. Hey, that's because your heart now got fixated on thinking that, you know what, God ain't going to judge you. But when it do happen, then you be sitting there looking crazy. But our people get comfortable in their sins, is what we're saying. All right? Uh, give me the book of Romans, chapter 13. Romans 13. Our people hate to be judged. They hate to be corrected. All right? We got to get out of that mindset. Romans 13 and 1. The book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. So let every soul be subject unto the higher power. Read. For there is no power but of God. So we have to learn to be submissive to the higher power. What is that higher power? That's going into your dang old police. You see what I'm saying? Your security. Uh, the laws of the land. Paying your taxes. You know what I'm saying? Abiding by the laws of the land. Okay? Those are the higher power that are ordained. Read. The powers that are ordained of God. These are the people that God set over us. Read. Whosoever therefore resists the power, those that hate to be corrected, those that hate to then go obey the laws of the land, all right, read, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So when you go against the rulers that the Most High have set up, you go against the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, all right? You have to obey the laws of the land. You have to be able to accept some form of correction. So if you're driving down the street and you're going faster than the speed limit and you get pulled over by a dang old cop, hey, obey the powers that be. All right? If you know you're not going to be walking around with a dang old unlicensed, dang old uh, uh, concealed weapons and you, uh, uh, without a permit, listen, when you get pulled over and they're going to tell you to do what they tell, me, tell you to do, do it. Agree quickly. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are in the way of him. All right? You got to obey the laws of the land. You, if, if, the, if they tell you that, listen, you're not going to be smoking weed, you're not going to be doing all these different things because the law uh, uh, states that, listen, you got to obey the laws of the land. You got to pay your taxes. You got to do all these things. If you ain't going to have children and you can't then go come to agreement with your uh, baby mama or your baby daddy and the judge set a dang old, uh, a type of dang old payment that you have to pay, Every month, child support, then guess what? Pay it. Pay it. Because that's 
judgment from the Most High. Not you got to be judged. You're going to be judged. All right? So you got to obey the powers that be. Read on. Verse 3. For the rules are not a terror to good works. So those that are over us are not a terror to good works. What is that saying? Those of us that is keeping the commandments of the Bible and obeying the laws of the land, the terror, those that are over us, they are not going to be a terror to those that is keeping and obeying the laws of the land, to good works. Read. But to the evil. But unto them that do evil. It is a terror unto them. Read. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Will, will you not then be afraid of the power if you are being disobedient against them? If you're going against the dang of laws of the land that is set up by the Most High God? Read. Do that which is good. He's telling you, do that which is good. Obey the laws of the land. All right? Read. And that you have praise of the same. And you won't have to worry about being judged or corrected. All right? That's what it's saying. You don't have to worry about being judged or corrected because our people hate being corrected. Okay? Give me Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30 and I want verse 9. Isaiah chapter 30 and 9. Our people hate being corrected. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9. Come on. That this is a rebellious people. What did I say? The Bible tell you that what? We are what? Rebellious people. Read. Lying children. You love the lie. Come on. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. And we are hard-headed as hell. Read. Which say to the seers. The seers are the prophets. Okay. Those that are out in the street. Warning them. Okay. Of the things that they're doing wrong. Judging them or correcting them. Reproving them. Read. See not. And to the prophet, prophesy not unto us right things. Don't see the things that we're doing wrong. And don't prophesy to us all that crazy stuff. Prophesy to us John 3, 16. Prophesy to us you know, that God so loved the world. We want to hear that kind of stuff. Prophesy to us that, you know, hey, you got to be baptized and come with, the, uh, uh, with a new man. You know what I'm saying? I want to be dipped in water. So you can then go uh, uh, feel like you don't have to do nothing. You want to hear those type of smooth teachings. Read. Speak unto us smooth things. You want to hear smooth things. Read that. Pro prophecy, de prophesy deceit. Prophesy lies unto us. Tell us that you know what? God is going to save everybody on planet Earth. John 3 16 means everybody's included. Everybody's going to be grafted in. Cornelius was a dang old uh, Gentile, a white man, with no evidence, no proof whatsoever. Prophesied of deceit. Christ is a white man. Blonde hair, blue eyes, but the Bible says he got that on here like wool. Skin like brass. You want to be taught lies. You want to hear those smooth words. Because why? Our people hate being corrected. Because we are hard-headed and we are stubborn and rebellious. We stiff-necked. Stiff Alright? So now, let's jump down to uh, Sirach. Let's finish on out. We're going to close out with this. Sirach. Chapter 17. 17 and verse 24. And the Apocrypha, the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verse 24. Read. But unto them that repent, uh -huh. he granted them return. And confronted those that feel impatient. So now, what we're going here to prove is that it's a way out of sin. It's a way to escape. The Most High does not put no more on us than we can bear. All right? And he always finds a way for us to escape. Okay? We just have to be wise enough to see the window of opportunity. All right? So now, the Most High always makes a way for us to escape his judgment. All right? And what is he telling us to do right here? Read it again. But unto them that repent, he granted them return. So he said, if you repent, he grants a way for you to return or to escape judgment. Read. And comforted those that fail in patience. And comfort those that fail in patience. Read. Return unto the Lord. So he's telling you again, return unto the Lord. Keep his commandments. Keep his laws. Read. And forsake thy sin. And do what? And forsake thy sin. And turn away from your sins. Put off that weak, na that weak nature. Read. 
Make thy prayer before his face. So now we got to make prayers before the law. We got to make supplications. We got to acknowledge our fault like David did. Read. And offend less. And do what? And offend less. So now, just in case some of y'all might have skipped past that part and be like, you know, okay, well, whatever. That, that offend less is a heavy statement. What that means is that, listen, when you come into this truth, it's going to be certain things that's going to be hard for you to overcome initially. So, my advice to you would be, according to the scripture is saying, is today going to work on the things that you can't overcome. All right? Like, for example, you never do anything about wearing fringes. How hard is it to put on fringes? All right? When you find out that, listen, a man, all you have to do is don't shave your beard, how hard is that to just not take a razor to your face? How hard is it for you as a woman to just put on a dress? All right? These are easy gimme commandments that initially over time when you start adding them up, it'll build up to a certain amount where you know what the most high say, okay, I see that he was good with this amount. You know what? Let me give him a power and strength to overcome smoking the weed. Let me give him power and the strength to quit being an adulterer. Let me give him the power and the strength to quit dang on going into the church on Sunday and profaning my Sabbath. You never know. You have to start somewhere. So you have to offend less. All right? Start somewhere. But just don't say, oh, hell with it. I'm going to just live my life. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If you sin, if you break one commandment, you're sinning all. That's true. But if you're not trying, then guess what? That makes you a reprobate and that makes you a dang on unworthy of the kingdom. Because you, you, you lack the ability to try to keep the commandments. Because all we're doing ultimately is rehearsing the righteous right. acts to the best of our ability. To the best of our ability. But you have to start somewhere. Alright? So now, give me Isaiah 55 and 7. I know I said that was last, but I got two more after this one. Isaiah 55 and 7. Mm -hmm. So you have to offend less. That's the goal. Offend less. Don't let nobody tell you that, you know what, hey, you ain't all this, you ain't that. You ain't crap. You can never be this, that, and third. Listen, stay strong in this truth. Continue to do what you're doing until the Most High give you the, the power and the strength to overcome. All right? Don't let nobody steal your dang old, uh, salvation from you. Isaiah 55 and verse 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 7. Read. Let the wicked forsake his way. So us as people that's coming from out of the world, we are still wicked. We are still filthy rags. So he said, let the wicked forsake his ways. Read. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And the evil thoughts. Read. And let him return unto the Lord. Let him repent and come back unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And the Lord will have mercy upon you. Read. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So he will abundantly pardon us. How will he abundantly pardon us? Give me Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. He will abundantly pardon. Pardon us. What do that mean? The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Uh-huh. Repent ye therefore. He's commanding us to repent. The wicked of us in our minds and the wicked of us in unrighteousness. He said to repent therefore. Read. And be converted. And be converted. Meaning change. Read. That your sin may be blotted out. How are he going to abundantly pardon us? By blotting out our sins. He will forget all the things you've done in your time past and forgive you of it. That's how he's going to pardon you. By blotting out all your transgressions. Read. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. When he comes to pass judgment on this wicked place. All right. For those of us that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, wherever you at, that place that you're in is wicked. All right? And the refreshing is when the Most High come back and set the nation back in its proper order. All right? Set this world back in its proper order. All right? So now, from there, give me the last one. John chapter 5 and verse 24. John chapter 5 and verse 24. So we've shown you that the Most High will give you a way to escape judgment. All right? Read that. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 24. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. 
He that heard my word. So those of you that are listening to us teach about understanding judging and judgment, all right, and how to escape sin. He said, read it again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, read. He that heareth my word. Because we are teaching the words of God, not our own thoughts. We're teaching what thus said the Lord. Read. And believe it on him. And those of you that believe what you're being taught. All right. And believe on him. That sent me. That sent him. Who sent Christ? The most high. Read. Had everlasting life. Shall have everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation. And shall not receive condemnation. Meaning shall not receive the ultimate judgment. Read. But is passed from death unto life. But shall escape. Gate death and pass into eternal life. That's how you escape judgment or the wrath of God. All right? By believing on him, as the scripture says, and applying his law, statutes, and commandments, and offending less. All right? So with that, brothers and sisters, we're going to conclude the class for that, understanding judging and judgment. All right? Until next time, I'm Brother Eli, and to my left, I'm Brother Andrew, and we say shalom. Shalom.